Hey, it's Mike here, and today I want to talk about how our view of aging in the Western world is fundamentally wrong. No, I'm not here to talk about all that immortality crap, though they did edit the age-related genes of some worms and made them live five times longer. Very interesting. We're going to talk about other interesting stuff. Nope, instead this video is going to be about how we don't have to grow old in the same way that most people are today. We don't have to grow old as fast and suffer as much as they are. So we're going to look at some epidemiology, some case studies, and some scientifically backed things that you can do to keep kicking butt into ripe old age. All right. You've probably heard this a hundred times. In the US at least, this is the first generation in 200 years that is projected to live shorter lives than their parents, but a shorter lifespan can mean something even worse a shorter health span, a shorter period of time in which you are healthy and you feel young and everything's great. This is the period that people want to live and you probably already know that teenagers, at least in the Western world, are exhibiting effects of aging that normally aren't seen until middle age. It's a bad, it's a bad situation. But on the bright side of modern times, our medical care is now better. For example, my grandpa was able to live to be 100 because he had a triple bypass where they took arteries from his legs and used them to bypass clogged areas of his heart. But one could argue that this is a double-edged sword because people are now able to die longer. We can keep sick people alive for longer. This can mean more pain, more discomfort, and less of an ability to enjoy life. And I think this is what young people are witnessing in the aging population, which makes them so afraid. I recently met a younger person who was more or less like, I just want to live fast and die young so I don't have to grow old and suffer. But ironically, this is the exact mentality that leads to making lifestyle choices that will result in decades of suffering. You know, you party hard, you drink a lot, you eat whatever you want, all of those atherogenic animal products and processed foods. But since none of these YOLO activities kill you immediately, like one cigarette isn't gonna give you cancer, one hot dog might not give you cancer, but they will develop chronic diseases from these decisions. But beyond that, what most people don't realize is you don't even have to have this YOLO attitude to end up with a short health span because it is the average state in the Western world. The average state is to age very ungrateful gracefully. So looking around, it's no surprise that we have this horrible expectation of aging, but it doesn't have to be quite that bad. All right, enough rambling. Let's look at some research on the common occurrences of aging, some of which we can at the very least slow down, others we can possibly avoid altogether. The first of which is cognitive decline. Looking at this study, it appears that we can get some pretty significant gains from some pretty minor choices. Quote, berry intake appears to delay cognitive aging by up to two and a half years. Just remember to eat some berries so that you can remember to eat some berries. From this study, do you eat a lot of vegetables? If you do, that could give you a 40% slower rate of cognitive decline than those who don't. Vegetables! I bet no one's ever told you that before. It's like I'm literally handing you the fountain of youth. Now to another common aging occurrence which I never imagined myself talking about, and that is peeing difficulty. Yeah, a lot of times I'm in the bathroom and there's an older gentleman next to me who's having a really hard time peeing. You don't want to hear about this? Okay. I'm talking about benign prostate hyperplasia or a enlargement of the prostate which is non-cancerous, which makes it difficult to pee. This affects 50% of men in their 50s and ramps up to 80% of men in their 80s. We spend $2 billion a year on medications and supplements for this. But does it have to happen? This study from China can give us some answers because in the 20s and 30s, this enlarged prostate problem was a rare occurrence. But today, the rates are very comparable to ours and the scientists point to diet. They have adopted the Western diet. But much of these aging ailments, including the one we just talked about, are related to inflammation, which is why it's no surprise that we call it inflammaging. Scientists so clever. Seriously, these scientists, on page two, what do you call a flamingo with inflammation? An inflamingo. Just kidding, that's not in there. I totally, I just photoshopped that in. But what the paper actually says is, quote, nutrition is probably the most powerful and pliable tool that we have to attain a chronic and systematic modulation of aging process toward an enhancement of health status of the elderly population. The fact of the matter is how much inflammation you have in your system is going to be directly related to how much pain you experience as you age. What's a great diet to reduce inflammation? Hold on to your seats. Hold on to your seats for this one. It's from this study. Put people on a vegan diet and you can see a one-third drop in inflammation. Who knew that it would be a vegan diet? 
Okay, I've talked about inflammation and cognitive decline and peeing, but let's talk about another plumbing system, our circulatory system. It is astounding to me the extent to which things we view as processes of aging are actually just atherosclerosis, clogged and hardened arteries. I have a video on every one of these that I'm about to mention, but in interest of time and not being too repetitive, I'm just gonna list them off. If you wanna know all the studies detailing the connections, you can check out the videos. There is erectile dysfunction from a clogged penile artery. There is female sexual dysfunction from clogged arteries down there as well. There is Alzheimer's, which is huge, from clogged brain arteries. And then there's chronic lower back pain, a leading cause of worldwide disability, and the subsequent spinal disc degeneration caused by clogged back arteries. And building on that one, I cannot imagine how much, what extent of joint pain and joint degeneration through aging is actually just caused from a lowered blood supply due to atherosclerosis. But does atherosclerosis have to be so crippling as we age? I don't think so. Looking to the Okinawans who ate 97% plants back in the 40s before they became westernized and increased their rates of disease, the people who grew up during that period had the highest rate of mobility at 100. That is huge. They looked at the body of one of these 100-year-old Okinawan women and found that her heart vessels were free of atherosclerotic narrowing and calcification, which was remarkable given the autopsies of white centenarians and other old white people, which show coronary vessel narrowing in 66% of patients and coronary calcification in 84 to 97%. In other words, she was still young at heart. Ricka ricka lame jokes. This is where it's awesome that you can do something because from Dr. Esselstyn's clinical trials, we know that we can reverse heart disease, unclog arteries in people with advanced cardiovascular disease using a whole food vegan diet. That was accompanied by several reports of erectile dysfunction reversing as well. Anthony and the other male patients also noted another change. When you're young, when you're a teenager, you see uh, a female and so on, it gets kind of excited. Raise the flag, I call it. This happened to us, uh, all the other, uh, Dr. Esselstyn's, uh, I call them uh, all the guinea pigs. The flag still rises. Dr. Esselstyn also advises his patients to eat a large amount of dark leafy greens, which are rich in nitrates that turn into nitric oxide, which lubricates the lining of your arteries. And this is completely in line with the Okinawans culture of keeping your own garden and sharing vegetables. Now I wanna look at an interesting case study from last year that shows just how a healthy Western diet is not enough. This 77 year old woman developed gradually worsening chest pressure and shortness of breath to the point where she was unable to walk more than half of a city block or up one flight of stairs. This is the definition of the type of aging that people are so afraid of, where you can't even walk a block because you feel so crappy. She described her diet as a healthy Western one. Her problems were from severe heart artery disease and she was referred to get a bypass like my grandfather did, but instead she went on a whole food vegan diet. Her LDL or bad cholesterol dropped to less than half of what it was before. Most amazingly though, quote, within one month of lifestyle change, her symptoms had nearly resolved and she was able to walk on a treadmill for up to 50 minutes without chest discomfort. I imagine these researchers being like, keep going Mildred, pedal to the metal in the name of science. But what makes this case so amazing is that presumably from feeling so good, she went off her diet and then as a result of light exercise after a month, she had severe heart pain, was sent to the hospital, ended up getting that bypass surgery, got heart pain later again, got a stint in and all that crap. And now for another story, clearly it's story time. I'll keep this one short though. This 80 year old woman was literally sent to die in hospice because of her severe heart failure. She was like, F it, I'm going vegan. And now she isn't dead. In fact, she swims four times a week and has regained so much of her life. Inspiring. At this point, I feel like I have to mention Ellsworth Wareham, retired heart surgeon who mowed his own lawn at 100 years old. Robust would be one way to describe Dr. Ellsworth Wareham. The 100-year-old retired heart surgeon occasionally does his own yard work. He walks regularly, still drives. Yes, these are individual people, but to back it up, we have the clinical trials 
of hundreds of people reversing heart disease on a whole food vegan diet in Ellsworth Wareham. He was an Adventist vegan, and from the Adventist study, we can see that vegans had 15% less total mortality. And in this mortality study, those Adventist vegans got lumped with the Adventist vegetarians, and the Adventist vegetarians are the longest living of the longest living formally described population on Earth. Finally, I wanna cover DNA because so much of the aging process is DNA related. We know from Ornish's studies that if you eat a whole food plant-based diet with virtually no animal products, you can actually grow the telomeres on the end of your DNA, the caps that protect your DNA from unraveling, essentially. And to another cool study, they measured the DNA damage in pilots because they're constantly exposed to that atmospheric radiation. They found that those who ate the most antioxidants from plants, had to be from plants, had lower DNA damage. All right, despite how fast I talk, I think that's all the points we have time for. Also, you can always just watch my videos at like 0.75 speed if you need to. In the end, I wanna stress that a vegan diet will not make you invincible. It will not make you live forever. But the data show that it is very likely that it will increase your health span and increase your lifespan, and that is awesome. And eating a lot of plants can just push back a lot of those aging processes, whether it's cognitive decline or DNA damage, all from these amazing antioxidants and phytochemicals. Another cool thing, helping the animals. I just watched Okja on Netflix. Wow. And on another note, for all of you YouTubers out there, people with your own channel, you may know that I recently co-started a tiny house YouTube channel and it reminded me of what it's like to start a channel and how difficult certain things can be. Like you can't even do a custom URL until you have 10,000 views. That is annoying. So if you are a new YouTuber, feel free to comment on the comment that I will pin to the top about your channel, a sentence about what it is and a link to it. And then hopefully everyone else can go and take a look at that, check them out, and I will hopefully spotlight a few of you in future videos. All right, that's it for today. Eat plants, don't eat animals, stay young at heart. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. See you next time. I imagine the researchers being like, keep going Mildred, give me 10 more minutes if you ever wanna see your grandkids again.